we can we can observe a Picasso bashing. There's this exhibition in uh, at the Brooklyn Museum uh, opening soon called Pablo Matic. What do you think about all that? Well, I, I think that, it, of course, it's very easy if you want to do men's bashing, of course, uh, the, the Picasso figure is very emblematic uh, for other reasons <laughs> than what she's talking about. But um, it's an easy way to, because of course he is so famous, uh, it's an easy way to say what she wants to say about men. Uh, but I think it's, it's not really appropriate because, I mean, the fact that she uh, actually dares to compare him to Weinberg, I mean, it's a ridiculous and a nightmare. Of course, we all know he had this story with my Therese, who was 17, but I mean, it's not that he made, uh, you know, that it was constant that he had girls that were younger than, than, than the norm. Uh, he had, through his life, rather younger, you know, wives or women around him, but that was for, I suppose, aesthetical reasons. And uh, all the same, he also had friends who were women and, and women that he worked with, uh, which is something that you know people don't speak about. I mean, somebody like uh, Marie Cutoli or Madame Ramier, who was uh, the woman who um, was doing the, the ceramic for my father. And he actually- Marie used... Cutoli, who is Marie Cut Cutoli? So she was somebody, she was quite an extraordinary woman. Uh, and uh, she, uh, among other things, decided she would like to make editions of um, uh, tapestry and carpets, uh, working with famous artists that, well, artists that she knew and, and loved. And she actually had a beautiful collection of works um, of my father and other people. I remember when I was a little girl going to a place and the first thing that was in the entrance was a calder and I would play with the calder, which was maybe not what I was supposed to do. And behind <laughs> it, it was a De Chirico and you know the whole house was full of extraordinary works of art. Where was uh, the house? Huh? Where was the house? Oh, the house was in Paris, actually. It was the apartment that became the last apartment of Yves Saint Laurent. And so I was very moved when he bought the apartment because it was a place that I'd always gone to as a child and a place that was very special and unique. Rue de Babylone. Rue de Babylone, exactement. Okay. And so uh, was he misogynistic, misogynistic as a, a lot of people say? What was his relation to women? Not only sexual, right? No, of course not. So as I say, you know, he, he didn't have, I mean, he, he was not obsessed with sex. I mean, it was obviously a very important part also of his inspiration in his work. Uh, but that doesn't mean that he saw women only through the eyes of, you know, arrows. <laughs> so uh, until what age did you see him? Uh, I didn't see him for the last 10 years of his life. But uh, so you... you, you so saw I was, when... Yeah, so I saw him basically until I was 15. And then I saw him just a few times. But I mean, until I was 15, I was spending all my holidays, uh, which meant about three, four months of the year I was living with him. Wow, that's a lot. So you have a real <laughs> image and a souvenir about your father. Sure. Uh. So uh, why do you think all that is happening now? Because, for example, I mean, there's one example, uh, and she's wrote about it. You know that um, after my mother left him, he had he made a lot of portraits of a young girl called Sylvette. And um, he, I can't remember exactly how he met her, but he met her in Valoris, and he said, you know, he would like to do a portrait. And he certainly did some marvelous portraits, but she said in, in some articles some years ago that he always was extremely respectful never you know there was never any uh, lecherous uh, approach by my father uh, and that, so I thought that that was quite important that it, when it came out some friends of mine came out in England because she's English uh, some friends of mine sent it to me and I thought in a way I thought why are they sending it to me like you know do does my father need to be you know uh, put in a better light. 
I was surprised in a way, but now I see that it was very good that this happened because uh, you need to see, to look at him through different eyes, not just through this new tendency of, of uh, first of all, yes, people like to um, faire tomber les idoles, comme on dit in French, I don't know. <laughs> But of destroy course, destroy the idols, probably. Yes, exactly. Destroy the idols, and he is definitely an idol. <laughs> uh, and um, and you know, you can't you can't look at the past with the eyes of today. I mean, you have to take some measure of you know how he grew up. After all, he's a man who was born in 1981. So the machism of this period is, of course, quite you know prevalent in his uh, frame mind, my and um, and mind frame. Yeah, <laughs> 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 never mind. Problem. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but for for when you were a little girl, did you have a, you were treated like your brother or maybe better even. <laughs> Ah, really? <laughs> well, yes, I was a very sweet little girl and I was very quiet. And so he allowed me to stay next to him while he was painting uh, because I could stay, spend two hours next to him doing my own drawings for, you know, two hours, three hours on a row and not utter a word. Um, so anyway, so he, he, I never thought that he treated women, you know, differently than men, at least from my eyes as a child. Um, then obviously I didn't have the men, you know, men, woman relation with him because I'm his daughter. It's a different kind of rapport, I suppose. But uh, at, why, at, why, at what point he refused to see you anymore? You and your brother. That's, yeah, that's a more complicated subject. And it, I think it has to do a lot more with my stepmother than with my father because she did the same to Maya. Uh, Maya didn't see my father for many, many, many years. Uh, and I think that when we were children, she didn't see us as threats. But once we got to be um, adolescents, you know, she felt that maybe we would uh, judge her and uh, not want her around. And so She then took the 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 fact that my fa mother wrote the book, you know, the uh, life with Picasso, to say no, they're they're taking their mother's side and they shouldn't be around. And she made this whole. Um, uh, actually, there were lots of there was a petition against my mother's book that was organized by her and some friends of hers. Um, so. Um, Yeah, I don't feel that, I never felt that I had a problem with my father directly. And actually I did see, happen to see him on the two or three occasions. Um, and the thing that I, once it was over, I regretted was I didn't say, you know, but you know, how, do you know that I'm coming to see you? Do you know that I'm bringing the bell and they're telling me you're not there? And I didn't do it at the time uh, because I thought I would just, um, Take in all the pleasure of just being with him, and but I, I frankly, and he didn't reproach me anything, um, and so I never felt that he didn't love me. So that's actually was a great strength. Uh, of course, but you seem very peaceful now. Huh? With, with all these stories, you seem kind of peaceful. Yes, because because I'm very, uh, I do very deeply think that he never stopped loving me. And the fact that I didn't see him didn't have to do directly with him and I. Um, and so, and then there's such a thing as forgiveness. I need to forgive him. I don't have anything to forgive him. Maybe I have something to forgive my stepmother. That's, uh, that's But he was problem. not an easy man, right? Everything was uh, oriented uh, uh, on the, on the di direction of the work. Yes, exactly. So, but that's something that I recognized very early on. Also, you have to understand that my mother is also a painter. So, on the contrary, to me, I always said that I would have hated to have 
so-called normal parents. I was very happy to have to live in a world where creativity was really at the center of our life. Um, creativity was the the best quality anybody could have, uh, rather than other things. And uh, of course, the fact that. Of course, their friends were also very often artists, um, made me live in a world that was a rather enchanted world. Mm -mm. That's good. And what, what do you think? And also, yes, I would also say that, you know, when I was growing up, I suppose by the time I got to be 13 or something, people started speaking about women's liberation. And I couldn't understand what they were talking about. And I would think, what do these women want? I thought, you know, I thought they were like me. I thought they had it all. I mean, I had the, my mother in front of me living like people were hoping to live. It took me about two years to understand what, what these women were asking for was actually what I was seeing in front of my eyes every day. And what, we, what, what uh, will the posterity remember about what's going on now? Do you think the think work will, of... Oui? I think it will pass. I think... I think it's an exaggeration uh, and like every, and it's of, of course, it's an exaggeration because women have been put uh, under, let's say, <laughs> for many, many years. And there were times when, I mean, like if you think of the surrealist women, there are many surrealist women who had a career at the time and now they were forgotten for maybe 40 years and now they're coming back and everybody's talking about them. And that's, that's great. And, and I think that my father would not resent that for anything in the world. I mean, after all, you know, his, he had, I mean, Dora Ma was a, a great uh, artist and Francois Chilot, my mother is a great artist. So he was, you know, he, he was not afraid of, of, uh, of being in a relationship with somebody who was also a creator and who was and a very woman. strong, right? And very strong, absolutely. And uh, you think there's still one subject about your father to explore because it, from a food to <laughs> everything is explored in his work, right? Yes. But the, well, it's such a rich uh, body of work to begin with. Uh, and then now he has a going into every detail but I think that you people will go on uh, looking at it and finding new interesting things and also as life goes on then some things that were maybe not relevant 20 years ago will become relevant 20 years from now uh, I think there's a lot a lot uh, to find in this creation I mean it is the most incredible because we always you know we always tend to say you know the greatest painter of the century well for sure he is the greatest sculptor of the century by far uh, then you go look at the ceramics people who only did ceramics all their life never did as many ceramics as my father did then you go and look at, at engravings I mean it's amazing what he did and in everything that he touched he invented new uh, techniques new ways Uh, of doing things, always um, putting his himself on the line every time and and, and um, reinventing himself over and over. And uh, but do you, do you still go to, for example, Picasso Museum or you you feel like you know everything? No, no, I was just there two days ago. <laughs> but I, do, <laughs> but I, I don't go to every Picasso show that exists in the world otherwise i would not be doing anything else actually um but um no it's nice to go back to museums i mean the same not just for picasso but generally there are some museum when you go back you discover different things because when you go and look at some works you absorb certain things so then the next time you go you've absorbed those things so you discover other things that 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 uh catch your eye Merci beaucoup. Thanks Merci. a lot. Okay. <laughs>